Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we're going to be doing a whole new series for my grade 10s. This is your exam question preparation series. I'm going to do a whole bunch of past paper questions so that you can get really familiar with the content and so you can prepare well for your exams. I'm doing the same thing for grade 11s as well, so you can see a lot more content coming your way. And on top of that, I'm also expanding into the IEB curriculum. So if you are an IEB learner, you should keep your eyes peeled for all those past paper videos that I'm going to walk you through because I know the questions are different. Um, and so often you need a little bit more challenging questions to work through. Now, if you are also new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget to get your hands on a copy of the cheat sheet. The grade 10 study guide is out now. It's on missangler.co.za and there is one in Afrikaans as well, all the way up to grade 12. It really simplifies the content. It makes it so easy to study. So why not? It makes you feel like you're cheating. It's so easy to study. Now let's dive in to our first exam question. It's at this point that if you want to attempt the question first, please do so. Pause the video now and then I will walk you through how to solve the question and at the very end I will show you the memo. Now this particular question that I have chosen is a simpler question. It is from section A. It's a question one level question. And this is just simply identifying plant tissues and telling us what they do. But often, if we don't have enough content knowledge, we're not going to be able to do these. And we get really stumped early on. And I know that grade 10s just despise plant tissues. And you really struggle with this. And so we're going to focus on how to make this simple. So first things first, what I always tell my students is to pay very close attention to any information you're given and to work with the diagram first before you answer the questions. That's really important. So it says study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So it doesn't give you any more information. Now, looking at this diagram, it is really important to decide immediately what this thing is is because if you don't know what it is because there's no clue in the beginning question or the beginning opening statement you're not going to be able to answer any of the following questions so immediately we should know this is a stomata now ma'am how did you know it was a stomata there's a couple of clues number one we cannot ignore the guard cells these are the guard cells there's one here and there is one on the other side that's my first clue the second clue is this small little opening space on the inside over here and my final clue is it's surrounded by another kind of tissue which is the epidermal tissue and the most unique thing about stomata for me is they kind of look like two jelly beans sitting next to one another. And so that's what we look out for if we're going to label these in an exam. So now that we've identified what it is, we can get a little bit more into this. Now, there are a lot of labels on this diagram, and I'm going to put my money on it that if we go through these questions now, you'll see they're going to ask you to provide labels. So let's just do it from the very beginning. Because if they don't ask you for all the variables or all the labels, that's fine you've identified everything so that in case they ask you maybe a function and not a label you've already successfully labeled it and you've done half the work already so let's go all the way around labeling our diagram now already I can tell that there's going to be some issues when people are doing this particular question because I'm already looking at label number one and I think some people will immediately go, oh, that's the guard cell. No, it's not the guard cell. That's a, that's a label for later on. Number one is referring to the cell wall, specifically the outer cell wall. Because if we get down to number two, so this is the outer cell wall. Number two, that is referencing the inner cell wall. So we don't want to confuse those two because remember what do stomata do? They like inflate and deflate to open and close the stomata or the stoma opening. Now moving on to label three, we need to be aware that 
the guard cells are unique because they are one of the specialized epidermal cells that has a organelle in it that other epidermal cells don't have and that's going to be a chloroplast. Next up after that we have got label 4 up here. Now this is what I'm talking about. Do you see that it's pointing to one to the left and one to the right? That is where the guard cell label is coming in because they're pointing to both of them. They're not pointing to the cytoplasm, I promise you. They're not pointing to the cytoplasm. Then moving on to number five, which is the stoma opening. It's really important that you get the spelling right on this one, because I'm just going to write another word next to it. It's called the stroma. This, just one little letter, if you mess it up, is the difference between talking about the opening in the stomata or the filling inside of a chloroplast, which is what the stroma is. So we've got to be really good at um, labeling and spelling that particular word. And last but not least, we have got label number six, which is in reference to all the surrounding tissue, and that is going to be the epidermal tissue. Now that we have labeled everything, let's go through the questions and use what we have prepared. Because that's what we've done, right? We've prepared our picture. Number one says, identify the tissue illustrated. So you need to tell me what kind of tissue this whole picture represents. And now remember, it's a collective, right? Because remember it says the tissue. And remember, the stomata is a part of the epidermal tissue. So this is epidermal tissue with a stoma or a stomata. That's what you need to identify. Yes, it's only for one mark and you're writing like a very short sentence, but that's what you need to provide. Moving on to our next question. Number two says, name two processes in which this tissue is involved. Now, just a little top tip, grade tens, when it says name two, you can only name two. If you name three, we will mark the first two and we will ignore the third answer. Even if the third answer is correct and the first two were wrong, it doesn't matter. We will only mark the first two. So what are our two processes? Well, it's definitely going to be gaseous exchange because that is where gases come and go. And also, let's not forget this is where transpiration takes place, which is where we lose water vapor and we pull water up from the roots out through the stoma. On to our next question, number three. Identify parts numbered one to five. Write the number and its label. Congrats, we have done that. We didn't need to do it for number six, but that's okay. Because it helped us identify that this is all part of the epidermal tissue. Now, last but not least, it says state one way in which the leaf is structurally suited for its function. Now, you have to know the functions of the leaf before you can even answer this question. Please, they are not asking for the function of a leaf. They are asking how is it structurally suited. So what about its structure allows it to do its function? Well, there are so many things, right? But the first one that should pop into your head is photosynthesis, right? That's its main function. So how is the leaf adapted to make photosynthesis work well and, and, and be efficient. Well, the key one is it's thin, it has a transparent cuticle, and that's really important because it's going to allow sunlight in. I'm going to write the rest of the answer on the other side because we're running out of space. You could also mention the palisade, so another option. So you don't have to write all of these, but another one is the palisade. Those palisade cells. Those palisade cells have a large surface area. I'm going to put your SA, which means that they can photosynthesize even more. And last but not least, another one is leaves are flat, which means they have, yet again, equals a large surface area. And so that is what they're looking for. But it's only one sentence for one mark. Now here is the official memo that went with this exam. I want you to know that it's a lot harder to find past papers for grade 10 and 11 because you don't write a common paper at the end of the year like the grade 12s do. So I also want you to know that 
different provinces, when you do a past paper from a different province that's not your own, you might notice that their questions or their memos are different or their expectations are different. And so my suggestion to you is always be specific and you'll never get it wrong. If you can be more specific, be more specific because they can't mark you down for how much knowledge you have on a topic when you're very wishy-washy and the memos are very open to interpretation, it makes it less likely that you'll get it right. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.